Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and bring to you guys my Detonate Dead build for the 3.1 Abyss League. Now, I haven't played the new Detonate Dead as it's getting, you know, reworked in Abyss League, but I do plan on playing it and it may even be my league starter after all these changes. And I want to go ahead and update you guys a little bit with kind of how to get started with it and maybe some uniques you want to strive for. So in here, in this video, we're going to talk about some of the uniques that you can use to level, some of the chase uniques you might want to aim for. Of course, not all of them, but just some of them. Um, the Mind Over Matter nerf, because it's, it's going to affect our build, along with the DD and Desecrate change. The new skill, Unearth, that comes out. And then we're going to go over some support gems that I have listed here, and some potential other ones. So first off, I want to go ahead and show you guys the passive tree so we can get this out of the way. Now, one of the first things to note is that I will be helping Alira. Um, whenever I play a crit Mind Over Matter build, I pretty much always help Alira as the Bandit because it gives flat mana regen along with Elemental Resistance and Critical Strike Multiplier. Now, you could also choose to play this build as an Elementalist, but if you choose to play it as an Elementalist and you go Ignite with, like, uh, a Beacon of Ruin, you may have to modify to pick up, like, some Ignite nodes. I personally don't really know too much about Ignite since they reworked it a little while ago, so I'm going to kind of play something that I'm more comfortable with, which is more of, like, an initial hit Inquisitor uh, themed around Critical Strikes and Inevitable Judgment. So, let's go ahead and jump on into it. We're going to go ahead and start off as an Inquisitor, so from the Templar side, and we're going to pick up our Ellie damage. Uh, we're going to grab Retribution, come down. You don't have to pick up Precision, this is kind of something that I like to do. It's more for like your Shield Charge and Mobility. Uh, Discipline and Training is a very strong life node. We're going to grab our Aryan nodes, move down, pick up Elementalist, which is a very strong node early game because of the Elemental Resistance. Uh, move down, grab your Devotion. Now you don't have to pick up Jewels right away. Uh, the new Abyss Jewels are coming out, so we don't really know specifically what's going to be on them. We just know it's flat stats. So obviously, if you have a good Jewel, feel free to allocate the two points. Otherwise, save them till later. I also wouldn't really recommend picking up Power Charges at the beginning. This is something later on that I'll explain. Uh, moving across, you've got your Purity of Flesh. Uh, explosive Impact, very strong. It gives area damage or area effect and fire damage. Coming down, here's the Mind Over Matter with the new changes to the nodes. They did get nerfed quite a bit, specifically Inspiration. Uh, move down for a quick recovery. We've got another two-point jewel. Uh, Occultist Dominion. Now, from this point here, you can kind of just clip off this part if you don't want it. Um, you can obviously just add it in later. We've got Heart and Soul, Mana and Life, some more area. Uh, moving down, another two-point jewel. Kind of the same thing up with this area. This is just raw damage. You've got Throat Seeker for Crit Multi along with more Crit Multi. You have Snow Forged along with just basic fire damage. Moving across, same thing here. You've got more Critical Strike Chance, a little Spell Crit to be specific. Um, and then you move down. You've got your Assassination along with Coordination, more Power Charges, and your Life and Jewel Socket. So this is not super tanky. It does get 172 max life with 106 maximum mana, so you're looking at about uh, 7.58k effective life if you're combining your mana pool and your life pool by about level 90. Uh, so it's not going to be the most tanky of builds, but I'm going to go into some stuff now that's going to help you become a bit more tanky. So, first, actually, before I go into that, I want to go ahead and show you guys the new Detonate Dead and kind of what's been changing with it. So this is going to be how the new Detonate Dead looks, and this is being used with, let's see, uh, the support doesn't work on channeled skills, so you have to cast it yourself, similar to the restrictions of Spell Echo support. So this is for, uh, what is this new skill called? I don't even remember. Uh, skills like this have the opportunity for more, over, uh, I don't remember what it's called, I'm being stupid here. Don't worry, I'll edit this out, YouTube Kappa. It's called Spell Cascade. There we go. That's what it's called. Spell Cascade basically um, creates like an AoE before and after. So it makes like a, a line cascade, I guess. I don't specifically know everything about this. I just know that AoE overlap equal more damage equal have a good time. All right. So Detonate Dead pre-nerf looked like this. I know that this is the actual like showcasing for the War for the Atlas, but this is actually not the correct gem. So if you guys want to see what it looks like, this is the... Detonate Dead before the buff, and this is what Detonate Dead looks like after. So the top end went up to 1200 from I think 500, not even 414 to 1235. So pretty much got tripled. Now, Detonate Dead has some new tags, 
or not new tags necessarily, but it now has a 6% base crit, um, up from 5. The cast speed has been buffed, so you cast it quicker, and then it gets base radius on level, and then it's got the two-part multi-component hit. So in the patch notes, I want to actually show you guys specifically what happened to it. So you can see here, Detonate Dead now deals spell damage based on the level of the skill gem. In addition, the damage based on the corpse's maximum life, the base fire damage dealt by the spell part of the explosion has been significantly increased. The skill now gains additional area of effect radius as it levels, and its base critical chance has been increased from 5 to 6%. The cast time has been lowered to 0.6 from 0.8. So along with um, Detonate Dead, you need another skill to raise corpses for you. So one of the most common skills is Desecrate. So Desecrate has gotten some changes as well. So Desecrate now creates five corpses up from three. The cooldown has been reduced to three seconds per stack down from five. And the cast time has, redu has been reduced to 0 0.8 down from one. So this is kind of like the main thing to note. Um, you also have Desecrate's maximum corpse level, now grants, etc. You can read this if you guys would like. There is another skill though um, called Unearth, which I believe is this one here. So Unearth is another way to generate corpses. However, Unearth, uh, or Unearth does not have a cooldown, so you can kind of spam it. Now, I do believe, and I could be incorrect here because I don't know too much about this, Unearth always creates a skeleton archer, which is kind of how the skill works. Desecrate, I believe, plays more on the monsters in your map. Meaning you can get lucky with Desecrate and have like, you know, golems and devourers and, you know, skeletal bears, etc. Which have higher health than, for example, a skeleton archer. Uh, so the detonate dead explosion part, based off the corpse's maximum life, should deal more damage. But again, this doesn't have a cooldown. So you kind of want to think about that when you're playing it. Okay, so now that those are gone, uh, I want to go ahead and talk about some of the leveling uniques that you can use in the build. Now these aren't all of them, I just kind of skimmed through and pulled up a couple that you can use. So we've got Oxiums. Uh, Oxiums, if you decide to level as crit, are not bad. Since it's a mace, it gives you the ability to use shield charge. It gives flat damage to spells. Uh, DD has 100% effectiveness, so it's okay. You get cast speed and crit. Nothing too special, it's just better than a basic weapon. Uh, Mokis are some rings you can use. They give 25% increased fire damage. They also give really good cold res. Uh, this is Barracks Respite, which I guess this is not really a leveling unique, but this is just something if you're curious. If you want to mess around with seeing how Ignite Spreading works without LE Focus, you can use this because it's when you kill an ignited enemy, inflict an equivalent Ignite on any, each nearby enemy. Uh, Nagamu's Sign is another ring that gives flat fire damage to spells and attacks. Uh, Nagamu Tiki, which is actually a, I guess these aren't really good leveling uniques because this is a prophecy one, but it gives percent fire damage, it's for a lower level. Uh, Nikta's Lantern gives plus two to level of socketed fire gems, gives level 10 fire pen, which is actually good because you're not going to have your inevitable judgment by level 41. It also gives spell damage, and then it gives socketed gems deal flat fire damage. So this is something if you want to work on like a three link, which actually makes it like a four link, then you get the plus two, and then you get the flat fire. Uh, of course, I'm pretty sure Tabula Rasa trumps all of these. Again, I don't really know. I've never personally played Detonate Dead, but I'm super excited to play this one. Uh, we've also got Volker's Guidance. You can't get these right away because they are from... Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but you can't get them right away, but they're for low level. Um, actually, does it say where it's from? Pale Court. There you go. Pale Council. Just kidding. I knew that. Um, they give life, flat fire to spells and attacks, and then just basic res. The last one would be Hrimnor's Resolve, which is a helmet that you can wear, which gives you maximum life, percent fire damage, and essentially makes you immune to chill and freeze if you use a fire skill recently. So... To jump into the last part of some of the other uniques that are not bad to use but are a bit higher level, you've got the Starkonja's Head, which I know seems very silly to use on a caster, but it's pretty solid. It gives you 70 dex, which you may need for like Desecrate or Vault Grace. You've got the increased attack speed for shield charge, global critical strike chance, maximum life, and that's pretty much about it. We've got Belly of the Beast, which is a chess piece that you can go for. Belly is used on pretty much any life-based character that you want. It's never really a bad option. Uh, Carcass is more for like uh, an offensive playstyle. It gives you max life, increased area, uh, and then area damage. 
perfect form is a is a pretty good chess piece as well. You get free Arctic armor, maximum life, uh, and then you get phase acrobatics. But you do have to be careful because of the minus cold res. I don't really think the increased dexterity is worth noting. It's also a pure evasion chess piece, so you probably don't really want to use Calm's Roots with it. Now, Perfect Form is an upgrade from the Snowblind Grace, which you need a Blessing of Tull, so you have to do Breach for it, so you can't get this right away. Um, you've also got an Atziri's Foible, and Chernabog's Pillar. I don't really think Chernabog's is very good, but I want to talk about these two specifically, and chat brought up one other point. Uh, the point being that you may not want to use a belly specifically because of the colors of it. I think we're going to be theming mainly around blue support gems. Uh, belly does not really support that, so one thing to note. Instead, you can use a Cloak of Defiance, uh, which gives you a bulk of mana and goes well uh, with Mind Over Matter. So, going on with Mind Over Matter, Adziri's Foible is an amulet that's probably not going to cost much. Because of the Mind Over Matter nerf, which I actually want to bring up right here really fast. Mind Over Matter uh, now grants 10% increased mana down from 12, so these are the baby nodes, uh, and 30% mana down from 40, and 40 added mana down from 100. So, that is one thing to be kind of cautious about, is that you don't really get as much mana as before, so Adziri's Foible kind of helps that. The reason why I want to use this, though, is because since they're pretty cheap and there's not really too much importance on the rolls except for, like, the max mana and the mana regen, you can vol them for plus one max curse. If you get plus one max curse on your Atziri's foible, since we do not really have any leech component, because I try to stay away from that, since we don't really need vol pact anymore and we don't have reflect, you can get the new gloves that are coming out, uh, which are called the Oscar Arm Nebuk Gloves, which actually give you uh, Assassin's Mark on hit. So when you explode the corpse, I'm going to assume, you know, the fire damage hits, applies Assassin's Mark. They also give life. And you yourself can run Blasphemy Temporal Chains. So Blasphemy Temporal Chains is super solid, because it prevents the mobs from kind of swarming you since you don't necessarily, you know, just cast one button. You have to do like the Desecrate or the Unearth and then explode. So I personally really like running Blasphemy Temporal Chains. It's kind of like, like I said, a personal choice. Um, you are free to do whatever you'd like, but this gives you the ability to run two curses with, of course, there is going to be some investment because you have to get the plus one curse, but it saves you the points on the passive tree for traveling up here or sacrificing a piece of gear necessarily. So, I want to go ahead and talk about the links that I'm using. Now, I don't personally know what the best links are, so I do want to apologize. I'm not trying to give you guys misinformation, but let me go ahead and run down you guys what I've come up with. Detonate Dead, Elemental Focus, Chance to Ignite, Spell Cascade, and then Increase Critical Strike Chance and Increase Critical Strike Damage. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, Mr. Pox Kappa, why would you use Elemental Focus and Chance to Ignite? Elemental Focus gives you 49% more elemental damage, but you cannot use any elemental ailments such as Ignite. And Chance to Ignite gives you like a ton of Chance to Ignite, but it also gives you 29% more fire damage. The explosion part of Detonate Dead does not scale with spell damage or spell crit. It is not a spell. It is its own type of mechanic. It's kind of like Bear Trap. It's weird. So... Using global modifiers or fire damage modifiers will work for it. So, for example, if I were to use controlled destruction, which is a multiplier to spell damage, it actually does not work for the explosion part. However, chance to ignite will. So, if you know, you can always just swap them in and out and kind of see what you want to do. But ultimately, these links all benefit the explosion part and the initial cast of detonate dead. Now, empower is probably going to be one of your better options. Um, but Empower is kind of diff difficult to get at the start of a league, especially like a level 3 or a level 4 one. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Or alternatively, you can always ask me at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.